Okay, so let's uh, do our last problem of the day. It's another one of these binding energy problems. So you guys should be able to um, do these problems on your own now. But let's just go through one more I got. Thank you. Um, so uh, this one says the atomic mass of iodine-127 is 126.9004 AME. Calculate the nuclear binding energy of this nucleus, the corresponding nuclear binding energy per nucleon, and the nuclear binding energy per mole of the I-127 nucleus. Okay? So, just to remind you, and again, this is a process, and I like to go through the same process every time. Okay, what equation are we using? The Einstein equation, right? Exactly. So, Does everybody remember that equation? Yes. Okay, wonderful. So, C, remember, is the speed of light that's given to you. But delta M, we have to figure out, right? So M, the mass of 127, I, I-127 is given to us. But the difference in mass is going to be, well, it's going to be this minus the total number of nucleons mass, okay? So how do we figure that out? So the mass of the total number of nucleons. So what do we have to do to do that? Number of protons and the number of neutrons, right? So how many protons does I-127 have? 53. 53, right? Every iodine atom has 53 protons in it, or it wouldn't be an iodine atom. So we say 53 times 1.007825 AMU. And remember, eventually we're going to change these AMUs to kilograms, okay? So how many uh, neutrons does the I-127 atom have in? 74. 74. And how do we get that? 127 minus 53 equals 74. Okay. 74, 1.008655. Okay, so let's add that up. I got a number very close to 126.9, as you would expect. 128.055, so we want to 6195 AM. Okay? So the delta mass, the difference in mass between the projected nuclei and the actual nuclei is going to be, well, remember what we do. We do the mass of the um, nucleus we're interested in minus the mass of the total nucleons, okay? So mass 127i minus mass of the total nucleons there. So we're going to have 126.9004 AMU minus 128.055195 AMU. Okay. So to four after the decimal, negative 1.1548 AMU, okay? But remember, remember what did we say? Energy here is going to be in joules, 
one joule equals one kilogram meter squared second squared. So what does that mean? Well, we're going to, when we plug this into this equation, we'll have meter squared second squared, but we have AMU for our mass units now. So we want to switch that to kilograms, okay? So in order to do that, you're going to have to, well, use this uh, conversion factor. 1 AMU equals 1.661 times 10 to the negative 24 grams. Okay, that will be given to you. So I'm just going to switch to kilograms right now. So, um, 1 AMU, 1.661 times 10 to the negative 24th grams times 1 kilogram divided by 1,000 grams. So when we do that, AMU cancel, grams cancel, and we're left with kilograms. Okay, so let's do that together. Okay, so the difference in mass between these two um, numbers is going to be negative 1.918. Times 10 to the negative 27 kilograms. Okay? So now, so does everybody follow me to this point? Okay. So I'm going to erase this top part up here so we can, in fact, why don't I just put the delta m over here? We'll erase the whole thing. So negative 1.918. 10 to the negative 27 kilograms. figure out, <clears throat> well, what is going to be the um, change in energy, okay? So, um, change in energy equals mass difference, C squared, so negative 1.918 times 10 to the negative 27 kilogram, 3.00 times 10 to the 8 meters per second squared. So remember, this is the energy that's being released that we're about to get. Hopefully you see it's going to be a negative number. Okay, the binding energy itself is a positive number. It's going to be the opposite of this number that we're getting. Okay? Okay, so... So I get, so this is also, we got to remember, this is per um, iodine-127 atom, okay? So that's per atom that we're doing, okay? So for the energy release per 127 iodine atom is going to be negative 1.726 times 10 to the negative 10th joules per atom, like that. Okay. So what's the binding energy? Right. It's going to be what? 1.726, right? times 10 to the negative 10 joules per I-27 atom. Okay, what's the binding energy per nucleon now? So, 
what's the number of nucleons in this uh, atom? How many nucleons? Tell me. Don't point to it. 127. Okay, it's not hard. It's written up there. Okay, 127 nucleons. So the binding energy per nucleon is going to be 1.726 times 10 to the negative 10th joules per 1 I27 atom. But we know for every 1 I27 atom, we have 127 nucleons. So are we okay with doing that? So we're going to divide this by 127. We might get 1.3 five, nine, times 10 to the negative 12 joules per nucleon. So that's the binding energy per nucleon. So um, I'm going to erase uh, this part here. I'm going to leave this because we're going to need that. I'm going to erase that top part of there, though is now we're going to find the binding energy per one mole of these atoms, okay? Now remember, oftentimes you want to put this in kilojoules because the number is going to be big, okay? So that's the binding energy per atom. So the binding energy per um, a mole of iodine-127 is going to be what? 1.726 times 10 to the negative 10 joules per 1, 127 I atom. But what do we know? For every 1 mole, we have 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. So in this case, for every one mole of I-27 atoms, we have 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd I-127 atoms. Cancel, cancel, like that. So, let's go back to that 1.726. But what did we say? We also want this in kilojoules. So, like that, right? Okay, so take that 1.726 times 10 to the negative 10th multiplied by 6.022 E23 and then divide that by 1,000 and to four sig figs you get 1.040 times 10 to the 11 kilojoules per mole. That's the binding energy of iodine-127. Okay. Any questions on that one? Okay, so now you have a couple of problems that you can go and watch, okay? Make sure you know how to do these by the next time we see each other, okay? Well, can we kill it? <laughs>